every province and everybody knows in BC it's it's one way it's it's super frustrating in BC or at least it was back in the day uh, if you're looking for a bottle of wine after 9 p.m. it's like good luck they treated everybody like yeah. children <laughs> kind of weird the government kind of oversees or at least oversaw everything same with the LCBO in Ontario though that's relaxing uh, Dougie yep. Ford loves his buck of beer stuff Dougie Ford loves regulations and loosening them around booze Alberta loves its free market I mean Ralph yep. Klein was big on that and I think you have to acknowledge uh, I mean if I was talking to a mental health and addictions counselor maybe they would say something different but from a commerce side I think it's been a huge success in Alberta letting the free market yep. rule but but what's your assessment sort of across the country who's doing it really well in your mind and and who's sort of the Luddite of the country uh, most of the most of the East Coast are far behind they have just the government run model uh, in Ontario, you have this weird prohibition era mix of government run LCBOs and the beer store, which is like technically a private company owned by the big brewers, but they've had a monopoly on the sale of two fours since the end of prohibition. Um, and so that change that's coming in Ontario is going, it should happen in 2025 when that agreement with this, this monstrous oligopoly of private interests uh, loses its exclusive rights. And so that's when Ontario is going to see the shift. Uh, and then as you shift westward, you get more of a mix where you can have some private retail like BC um, and Alberta, um, but it's not necessarily convenience stores like you see in Quebec, which we've obviously already talked about. So where do you see this going in Alberta? You think it's going to happen? I mean, what, is, what, what, what does your gut tell you here? I mean, I hope so. I, there are going to be a slew of people coming out against this, right? And they will make all sorts of arguments about, well, it's going to increase uh, alcohol-related risks and people are going to buy a lot more alcohol. If we use that Quebec reference, right? They have 47, over 8,000 retail outlets. Quebecers on average, um, just before the pandemic, spent $2 more per month on alcohol. That's it. So it wasn't like opening up the market created a bunch of problematic drinkers. Uh, it's two dollars per more, two dollars more per month, and so it really is a convenience factor. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer, um, and it's to be honest, it's just long overdue when you compare us to many places in Europe where you can go virtually anywhere um, and pick up beer or wine or what have you. Um, and just at the end of the day, treating adults like adults. And this is also another important thing is that in many of these instances, these businesses already sell age restricted goods. So they've established that they have the proper processes in place to ID properly if we're worried about, if we're worried about minors. Um, and ironically, the data from Ontario shows that those private retailers, uh, or like those corner stores, let's use them as an example, actually ID in secret shopper cases at a better rate than the government owned LCBO does. Huh. Uh, and so we get this argument all the time where people are like, well, it's a private company. These are private companies. Like, how do we trust them to ID? And it's like, well, we already trust them to ID on tobacco products, vaping products, gambling, et cetera. Um, and when they've done the secret shopper trials, at least in Ontario, they, they outperform the government stores. Uh, and, and that should be intuitive, I think, for most people in the public health space, but it's not. It should be intuitive because they have a little more skin in the game. If they get caught, let's say you lose your license to sell age-restricted goods, and you're a convenience store owner, it's probably the end, end of your, your business model if you can't sell um, those things anymore. Uh, and, those, and, and having real punishments for selling to minors, I think, is totally appropriate. Um, and so I don't, we will see a lot of nonsense thrown this way uh, from people who don't want this, uh, but there just isn't a lot of evidence to, to suggest that the sky will fall if all of a sudden you can pick up a six pack at your local corner store. The Consumer Choice Center is all about the global glass uh, grassroots. Look at that. I've got bottles on the brain, Johnny. It's the global <laughs> grassroots move. <laughs> kind of grassroots. That could be the headline if we're writing a headline for stories on beer and wine. The global grassroots movement for consumer choice. Uh, that's where David Clement is their North American director. You can learn more about what they do by checking out consumerchoicecenter.org. Thanks for moving the conversation forward, David. We appreciate you sharing your opinion. 